I'm Roy Potter, a former U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel. Welcome to the Potter Expositor. Hi ladies and gentlemen, today is April 24th, 2017 and there's of course a lot going on, a lot is being hidden from us, but I'm thinking that most of that information is out there for everybody if, if you're willing to go look. So it really doesn't do a whole lot of good for me to repeat all the time the same things that are being covered by others. Sometimes my take on the, the situation is helpful, I think, but more often than not, I like looking at other things that are just below the surface that are a, a, a problem, but people aren't really recognizing it as such. So I'm going to read a little something here. This, this is for me, and uh, the reason why I'm going to do this is because I think it's very important to understand an event that happened with FBI Director Comey. Of course, he's gone down to the South Pacific to meet with other intelligence leaders. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. It really depends on, on how Trump views it and the administration. But let me just read this because this, I think, is very important. One of Trump's major platforms was restoration of law and order. Wow. But law and order at, at what level? Technically, the government is supposed to operate under restrictions of law, which is the Constitution. But already we're, we seem to be talking about the people being placed under this law and order. And I think as we watch the Trump administration going through things here, that's where their, their strongest efforts are. And we were under the impression at first that Trump was going to drain the swamp, get the government off our backs, those kinds of things. And you've heard me say that before, so let me continue here. One of Trump's major platforms was restoration of law and order. But if this does not begin with the government and requiring it and its agents to obey the supreme law of the land, the Constitution of the United States, states which is the blueprint of law and order, from which its limited powers are derived, then the people see no leadership in empty promises of restoring law and order. Obviously, you know, we want to go after Assange now. We're failing to go after Clinton. We're failing to go after these other people that have done things. McCain, for instance, aiding and abetting the, the terrorists in Syria, etc. Lois Lerner, you know, there's some rumblings under the ground there, but none of these people at the top are punished. They always go after the small people, when in fact the government... Uh, I saw one person made a comment saying, well, you know, the people are the ones that have to take care of this, this problem, but we have to be careful not to go into an anarchy situation. We have a structure for a reason. The problem is the structure is not obeying the charter that the people gave to it to operate, which is the Constitution of the United States. So let me go on here. What's happened with Comey? And, and there, that I, prof, I premise all this with this part of the information that I wanted to talk about. Comey has cooked up a story. I don't know who he did this with. Um, I don't know if he's got Trump's okay on it or if Trump bought this. I don't really know. But what's happened is, is Comey's big story is now claiming that he fudged on the Clinton prosecution because of Lynch, Attorney General Loretta Lynch, and that a Russian hacker who had gotten into the Clinton server would have compromised the FBI's nonpartisanship appearances if they had gone forward with this. Now, I seriously doubt this well-crafted story of lame excuses. Okay? And I think you can understand why. But okay, let's take it at face value. Now that he's got an AG that's supposedly on the side of bringing the government back into line and going after the corruption in government, okay, Comey, let the NYPD loose. Get that laptop back out there and let's start doing the investigation. Let's not just sweep it under the rug that because you were slowed down under A.G. Lynch, which I really doubt because you and Lynch worked for the Clintons, okay? Obviously, there's something wrong here. 
Really? You were, you were going to, to stand up for the fidelity, integrity, and bravery of the, of the FBI? Really? I don't think so. No, you're crafting this story now so that you have an excuse as to why you did what you did. And I just hope that Trump isn't going along with this, this ignoramus story. Okay, so taking that at face value, now you can let the NYPD loose. You can encourage them to go forward. You can go, encourage Sessions to, to direct things so that we go after Clinton and all of that corruption and crime right there. All right? So the, the, the excuse that you're using doesn't hold water if you don't go forward from here. Remember, there is no double jeopardy on Clinton just from you not wanting to to suggest prosecution, which was really odd anyway for the FBI director to do that, but okay. But you're not putting her in double jeopardy by going after her now. So let's see something. And let's see something about going after these other corrupt, corrupt officials as well from the top down. Okay. That's kind of where I wanted to go with this, but I, I do have another little bit of information I'd like to cover. Uh, and that is this. When I look at politics, you have to understand that I look at it from a military perspective. In fact, in the military schools, we are taught that war is nothing more than politics or diplomacy by other means. Okay? In other words, military action. In the United States, we follow what's called the principles of war that were developed by a Prussian general by the name of Clausewitz. A lot of the military people will know what I'm talking about here, and historians, etc. Clausewitz came up with basically nine principles of war. And I've talked about this to some extent in the past. But why am I bringing it up now? Because the media, the propaganda that is being thrown at us, the amount of information that is being thrown at us by the CIA and the deep state through its tool, the mainstream media, is doing what we call a mass attack. Not just a frontal attack, but they're doing en envelopments and penetrations and all of this. In other words, it's using one of the principles of war, mass, so much that you can't deal with it. All right? And some of it is to take our minds off of other issues that are going on. Do you see what I'm saying here? Those are what I've called feints in the past. They pretend to attack in this direction and they, that what they're really doing is, is they're making you respond so they can see your strength. One of the other aspects of doing this type of tactics is to hide your main effort. In other words, the final objective. And you have intermediate objectives that you take to the final objective. But I think what we're seeing here is not just that there's more information available, and that's why it seems so overwhelming because, because of the uh, uh, availability of the internet and mass communications and all that. I look at it as a deliberate ruse, a deliberate tactic to flood you with so much information that you cannot see for the fog of war what the main effort is. So we're going to go back to the map here for a minute. Obviously, this is the final prize, taking that over. Even Soros said that this was the reason why the New World Order hasn't succeeded yet, is, is the United States of America. Well, there's some truth to that and there isn't. The fact of the matter is the people just refuse to stand up and hold their government accountable, so I'm not so sure that we're not already captured. But as I pointed out before, the Trotskyites who took over the neocon movement actually became the neocon movement in the United States and have a beef with Stalin, Russia. Uh, and of course, Stalin's gone, but anyway, the whole principle of the Russian aristocracy and, and the, the Russian bureaucracy and leadership, they want this back. And if you look at what's happening, everything is to pretty much focus on Russia. Even what's going on with China and North Korea, our response to that allows us to have a reason to come up on the Russian Eastern Front. Well, Iran has also been 
touted as an objective. We keep hearing how bad Iran is. We never hear about how bad Saudi Arabia is, despite the fact that this is the center for Wahhabists, Sunni Wahhabists. Those are the worst. We never hear about Iran who are principally Shiites. Why? Well, we could go into the history of that, and I've talked about it before, but if you'll notice what's going on here, all right, I've talked about this before, and somebody said, well, those units were already there. I know that, but they're adding it to them. All right, All these NATO units are now being strengthened again. This whole deal with uh, the, the problem with uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Ukraine right here, with the Crimea, which has, of course, the Russians' availability to get to the Black Sea and then out into the Mediterranean. These are all ways to lock Russia in, okay? So while they keep us involved with worrying about where our next plate of food is going to come from or, you know, the NFL football teams or whatever, they're building up to go after Russia, seriously. And Iran is just another stepping stone because if you notice, if you look at this from a military perspective, if you don't have control of Iran, okay, and you plan on, on doing this envelopment of Russia or encirclement, which is really what's going on here, Iran has too much access from the sea. And if you don't control Iran, then your rear or your flanks are not covered. They're looking at this seriously along the principles of war and the tactics of how to get to Russia. And then of course, why is that? Well, Russia is not in the banking system. And it's encouraging others to get out of the Western New World Order, Rothschild, London-based, Federal Reserve-based banking system. Plus, it is the only superpower left that is considered a Christian country. However you feel about Christianity, whether you believe it or not, or what degree you believe it, doesn't matter. The principles of that religion are what the guys who are centered in New York and D.C. and London and, the, and even the Vatican hate at this point. So what do I see? What is the main effort? Why have they released the Islamicists? Well, there are actually two major objectives, because I think the United States is already captured. The people aren't totally yet, but the institutions are, where the institutions in Russia are not at this point. So what is the main effort? Well, the main objective is world domination. Okay, well, that's easy to say. What are the intermediate objectives that also will have these main efforts involved? The attack on Christianity and allowing Islam to become the world religion, which is a religion of force. And the other one, is taking over the Russian institutions. And you can see that when you do a map study. That's kind of how it looks. This is a war upon the principles of love your fellow man under the guise of humanitarian efforts, under the guise of all of these different movements that are supposed to free the people, to give them liberty, and they're really not. It's just Locking, locking down more government control. So this is kind of a review of, of all of that information. And I know it's probably kind of like, well, yeah, so what? Just remember that the deceptions like this thing with Comey making these excuses for why he didn't act against Clinton because the FBI thought for sure that she was going to be the President of the United States, so they didn't want to be compromised on this Russian hacker thing. In other words, find out that you know they were actually aware of this and, and were acting on it. That's cowardice. That might be good politics, but it's not good law enforcement and it's not honest. It's not fidelity, integrity, and bravery. Out here until next time.